Watch Wars. What is going on? Welcome to this edition of Watch Wars. Do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. I publish Tuesdays and Fridays and sometimes in between. If you leave me a comment, I will write you back. It's a great way to help the channel and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. What have we got on deck? We are warring the Swatch Blanc Pond, the Swatch, <laughs> the Swatch Pain, the Swatch Pond. Versus my LSA watch from Maritac from our good friends at Countycom. Why? Well, these both of these watches are designed to achieve an affordable aesthetic of the OG, of the Blanc Pond dive watch. And they both achieve a certain amount of that, although one does it a little bit better than the other. And we're going to find out who does what very, very soon. We uh, also have some other stuff on the table. What you got, D? What you got? We have got the watch taco, which the LSA uh, came shipped into. We've got the Watchmakers 3-in-1 Titanium Collab Tool. Love that piece. Uh, we've got shirts available at hobbyofhours.com, mugs as well. A bunch of super cool Countycom gear right up in here. And then we've got the Blanc Pond, uh, Swatch Pond, uh, Ocean of Storms model. Big thanks to Rose City. He picked this up for me on his trip to Singapore because I live nowhere near a Swatch store and I can't believe there isn't a Swatch store in Los Angeles. I've actually got it on a different strap than the original it came on. More on that and why in a little bit. We've got the Swatch, uh, a guide for connoisseurs and collectors book, a little bit on the aged side, but still a very good resource. If you wanna see past models of uh, Swatch, if you're collecting them, you know me, I love my watch books. And we've got the paraphernalia from the Swatch Pond uh, boxing of sorts. Let's take a quick look at the packaging for the, the Blanc Pond real quick before we get into the war itself. Comes packaged here like this, Ocean of Storms. A little bit of info. Uh, each of the Blanc Pond releases uh, corresponds to an ocean, uh, typically on the Earth. This one is an ocean on the moon. It's the largest of the lunar seas. It's another one classified as an ocean. I don't know, I don't understand why they do that, but kind of a cool box, you know, for your 400 bucks plus tax. And it has a cool case that it comes in, but there's not a lot of value for this case in terms of secondary use, right? Like they make things like this that are smaller that can actually hold the watch, like for as a travel thing. Um, this one doesn't really accomplish that. Whereas the watch taco from Countycom <laughs> hits it out of the park. You can actually get three watches in here. Uh, on a, if you got watches on a strap, one here with the head up here, one here with the head up here, face down so they don't face each other, and then one in the middle. You also have a spot in there for your titanium collab tool, or you can put it in the outside as well. So I'm not going to actually war these containers um, because this one would be a uh, slam dunk, as we can see. The strap. Uh, whenever I get a watch that has a fabric strap, especially if it's new, and I actually, especially if it's new, I tend to not want to use that strap. So I want to kind of keep this unworn, unused, in case I want to sell the piece. And in this case, which I'll get to in a minute, it's not that great of a strap to begin with. It's more attractive. Uh, and a little better than the ones on the moon swatch, but I can tell that if I was to wear this, it would eventually fray, so it's not going to be worn by me. It's just gonna be set aside. And the booklets that come in with the swatch pawn, let's see what's in, I'll come to this one in a second. The one book is really rather nice. It shows you all the different versions of the different watches. You know, you can get this information online. That was the one I was lining up to get until they released this Ocean of Storms one. Really rather like the Antarctic version. And it also tells you, <laughs> okay, on the case back, 
Let's get to the prettier one. They have an unusual sea slug on each one. Uh, they have a nudie branch, which is it's actually pronounced <laughs> nudie bronc, I just found out from uh, the internet. But this one's actually really rather cool. It's called the dragon, the blue dragon. And it's somehow associated to the ocean, each one. Each one has its own nudie branch. I promise you that this is the one and only time I'm gonna show you my nudie branch uh, when we get to the back, the case back of that watch. But I guess nudie branch is better than sea slug, so it's cool that you get to see all of them. And then this booklet is the one expressly about the ocean of storms. It's amazing that this one didn't come out as the original one in the original release because it is certainly the most attractive but that's that's my nudie branch the okina luna not as attractive as the blue dragon one but kind of cool bit of booklets coming inside there okay we can take the hobby of ours coffee mug out of the picture along with the shirt super quick look at the swatch book just so you know what you're getting if you were to choose this book. Readily available on eBay. Very affordable. I don't remember how much. You know, 20, 30 bucks maybe. And if you want to collect or hunt old swatches, it's a pretty good resource for doing so. As we know, in the modern watch wars, we've got 25 criteria to war. Have no fear. I'm going to zip right through them. They are broken down into four categories. The exterior, the interior, the movement, and the market. There will always be a market assessment on these because I always encourage you to get uh, your watch at the best possible price. With no further ado, let us jump in. It should be pointed out that both of these watches are wearing straps that neither one of them came with. Uh, I upgraded the strap on this one to a Zulu Maritech. I just, uh, it's also a Countycom product, but I like the rings. I like the metal uh, rings on this one a little bit better, uh, murdered out in black. Uh, as opposed to the titanium one that it comes with, which is uh, silver colored. And this is a moose strap, one of my uh, more favorite NATO straps. And it goes so well with the, the swatch pane that I figured why not. And as I said earlier, I want to save that original strap for it. I think one of the major reasons, major reasons, I wanted to compare these two is price. They are very, very close in price. Now, this watch is no longer available, the LSA. I spoke with Mike. He's bringing out a, a GMT version of it in the coming months. So uh, go to the link in the description, uh, the LSA listing on their website, and sign up for his mailing list notifications so that when that release comes out for pre-order, you don't miss your chance. I haven't seen the design of it yet, but he said it's gonna have a lot of the features of this watch. I can't wait to see it. Because as you know, I always advocate for a GMT complication getting added to a dive watch because it takes nothing additional in terms of movement height virtually. And I, you know, if you're gonna be diving, you're probably gonna be on vacation in another time zone somewhere. So these are very close in price. This one is 400 uh, USD plus tax, probable shipping, depending on how it comes uh, along. So I'm probably into this piece for I don't know, 450, 460 or something. And when this originally came out, I think it sold at 550, but I think it went on sale for 500. And then with our discount code, I think I got it for 450. I kind of don't remember, it was a long time ago. Uh, actually not that long time ago, but uh, <laughs> the memory is going on this horse. Uh, but they are so close in price and you get so much more in this watch, which we'll see in a few moments, that I was like, you know what, let's compare these two because a lot of people can't get this watch. I'm surprised I got it. Double shout out to Rose City for helping me score this. I particularly wanted this piece for this review because if you could get these within the same price realm of this, you're gonna be so much more happier. And let's dive in. Let's put some numbers up on the board first to see what we are indeed working with. They're not too dissimilar size-wise, right? They're within a millimeter of one another with the diameter. Same goes for the lug to lug. The height, the swatch is a little bit taller, which is kind of funny. I mean, it does have a display case back, bioceramic through and through. Uh, the strap, vastly different. We've got 20 millimeters here, 22 here. Water resistance, 300 meters, ba-bam. Water resistance, 91 meters, which is 50 fathoms. Okay, clever. And the construct of this watch just feels just that much better than the Moon Swatch I checked out, G Money's. 
Maybe it's because there's no pushers on here to actuate, um, because I think being fearful of breaking that watch is what made me not like that one so much. Uh, there's less to do here with that, but the reference on this is the LSA Marble CF. This is the S035B400. The crystal is sapphire here. The crystal over here is <laughs> bio-sourced. More on that in a minute. And uh, the movement over here is a Miyota. This one is the System, System 51. And the weight, pretty dramatically different. This is 33 grams versus 52. The one funny thing I'm gonna get out of the way about System 51 uh, immediately is the winding is counterclockwise. So you have to wind it. I'm not gonna wind it like that because I want it to stay stuck at that time, but you would wind this counterclockwise, non-screw down crown. I found it really rather uh, hilarious when I got this in because I was winding it as normal and it wasn't staying powered. I was like, oh gosh, am I going to have to re get the receipt off of Rose City and ship this back to Singapore? Then I, uh, you know, did myself a favor, Googled it myself, and uh, Google led me to it. All right, jumping in to the countdown of the 25 items. The exterior. The strap award is going to the LSA. We already discussed that the original strap on this one uh, was likely going to fray. The clasp, also better on this one. In fact, let me grab that old clasp and get that back here. Because it's that same bioceramic stuff, which is, we want to call it plastic, but it's actually two-thirds ceramic and one-third castor oil. If you don't know what castor oil is, ask, a, ask your parent or grandparent. That was a medicinal <laughs> syrup of sorts you would take back in the day. And I guess it does have um, anti-inflammatory uh, <laughs> aspects to it. But if you were sick... You had to take some castor oil. I guess it did not taste good, but I guess, I don't know. How on earth did they figure out they could use that to make watches? Who knows? So that class was the same bioceramic blah, blah, as this case. Now, both of these bezels are 120 click. This one is titanium though. So the bezel award is going over here. Now the insert is, uh, award is going to the uh, swatch pane because it's both loomed and swatch has the correct blanc pond font. Duh. And the graduation from zero to 15 is, is an attractive feature in a dive watch, even though you're not, let's be honest, this is a desk diver watch at best. I love seeing that zero to 15 graduation on a diving piece. Mostly it's poor man's steak watch. You can time a steak with that. So the crystal award over here, again, that's Sapphire versus bio sourced and the case itself, gosh, clear winner LSA. This is carbon fiber. Oh, this bezel here, so that's the titanium part. And this one, <laughs> bioceramic. Uh, the LSA logo on the case back is the super cool. Get in there, D. Maritac logo, that Trident, love that. But this, <laughs> back to my nudie branch. Okay, promise, this is the only time you'll see my nudie branch. I still have the sticker back there, but that's the nudie branch on that rotating rotor, which is kind of cool. And a see-through case back is always good, except when it adds to the height, <laughs> which is the uh, the case here. But still a pretty cool case back image. And even though I love me some uh, counting comm Trident, the case back award is going there. The crown award is going to LSA. It is screw down. And the crown guard award is going over here. This is a little more of a vintage crown. And it doesn't have any crown guards, but this one at least does have some crown guards. Uh, so there you have it. All right, that is the first part of the exterior. We're moving on to the second part. Diameter, a little smaller here. Height, smaller here. Lug width, calling it a draw. 22 is certainly an acceptable lug width. Um, and 20 is obviously preferred, but 22 is certainly acceptable. Water resistance, LSA. Weight, going to swatch. Uh, th <laughs> swatch pane, swatch pawn. Uh, at 33 grams. There you have the exterior breakdown. The LSA is in the lead. Moving interiorly, the dial on the LSA is cleaner. It also has a really rather cool uh, carbon fiber print. This one over here, it does have the numerals 36912, but it's burdened a little bit by all of the advertising. So point over here, rehot. There is really not a use of a rehot in either, so we're calling that a draw. The loom, the LSA just smashes it. Let's insert a loom shot. And lastly, the handset. 
I'm going to award that point to the Swatch Pond because it has the OG hands that the uh, Block Pond has. Now these hands are very clean, very crisp, and really rather gorge. They're, they're, they're perfect. And they kind of have the same seconds hand if you notice it. But because this has the OG, it's going to win the point for the interior. Heading into the movement. Going to award the movement award to the LSA, the Miyota, tried and true. And, you know, you can actually get that one fixed. Come back to that in a minute. Power reserve. This swatch has 90 hours of power reserve versus the 42 hours of here. Slam dunk for the Swatch Pond. How they're getting 90 hours of power reserve out of this, I have no idea. I wonder if maybe that's a typo. I might have to go back and check that. The complications. They both have a date at four o'clock, nothing special otherwise, so that one is a draw. Service cost. Well, technically it's zero for the Swatch, because you can't get it serviced. But in the real world, we're gonna award that point to the LSA because the Miyota 9015, tried and true, great movement, and certainly easier uh, <laughs> to uh, get it uh, serviced. Well, I guess service costs on this would be buy another watch. Lastly, market value. The Swatch Pond is going to narrowly win out on this. Keep in mind that both of these watches are sporting a separate strap, and both of those straps cost around 20 bucks, I think, so that's net net. But this one came in just a little bit cheaper, just a very, very little bit cheaper. And they're so close that in a real world decision, I would clearly choose this over this, even if it incurred an additional modest expense. Now value, you're getting way more value with the LSA. It's, I wanted to say it's a real watch, how dare I? This watch does tell time, but you can actually take this uh, diving if you wanted to, 300 meters. And this is my go-to watch. This is my stuff hits the fan watch. This watch is always near the door where I keep my keys uh, in case I need to grab and go. Uh-oh, look at that. That watch is going. I better grab and go. So it still has that Ted 10 uh, time zone. But resale. Resale is going to the swatch pane. Why? Because it's still hype. I could probably sell this for five, 600 bucks. And especially since I have the receipt and I can prove that it's real. I would get the premium price. Who knows? Maybe these are going for even more than that at this point. I have no idea. But I do know the resale value is going to be higher on this than this. Although, I, in truth, I haven't checked what these are going for in the used market. Maybe these are fetching a premium as well. And there you have it. The winner of the watch war is the LSA 14 to 8. Really no surprises there. I, I, I kind of still want to call it a real watch versus the Swatch Pond. And the question will become... Okay, if you're in a position to buy a four or $500 dive watch, would either of these make the grade for you? I think for the LSA, if you could pick one up on the used market affordably, why not? But in truth, I would probably hang out to see what Mike does with the GMT uh, version he's uh, been working on for a little while now. So I'm, I'm super excited to see that one. I love a GMT watch, especially combined with a diver or a G GMT complication on a diver. The Swatch Pond. Can I recommend it to you? It's better than the Moon Swatch, right? It's more expensive than the Moon Swatch by at least a hundred bucks, if not a little bit more. I don't know, who is that watch for is the question I find myself asking. Like, who's the audience for that? Is it going to bring people along in the hobby the same way the Moon Swatch did? I don't know about that. I think it's cool they incorporated an automatic movement and it's certainly very cool that the um, water resistance is indeed 50 fathoms, that 91 meters. But I don't know. I certainly would not be paying a premium for it. If you're someone who is earnestly desiring a Blanc Pond 50 fathoms, the real one, I think newer ones are in the realm of 10 to 12 Gs. Older ones, like the NORADs, gosh, look at 25, 30K. But you went, that's a collector's watch. That's not a watch you would take diving. But Blanc Pond itself has a, a number of other variants that I discovered as I was going down the rabbit hole. And if it's a placeholder for getting a, um, a true, I'll say true Blanc Pond, maybe. But I kind of don't know. It's uh, Swatch watches were meant to be inexpensive fun. Actually, Swatch means, stands for second watch. That's what Swatch meant originally. And it's meant to be fun. The older ones are colorful, playful, affordable. Once they got into incorporating automatic movements, that price started going up. And 
if someone was to buy this watch because they wanted to get an inexpensive automatic watch that has some design aesthetic of a watch they admire and then it starts bringing them into the hobby and then this thing goes south and they can't replace it the fact that you can't fix it if it goes bad is the one is the, it's the achilles heel of the system 51 movement if this was a 250 dollars watch that you know if the movement goes south okay buy another one all right but that's not what this watch is this is a $450 watch that you can't ever get fixed. And it, it's a problem to get it in the first place. The only, the only real critique I have of, a, uh, of Swatch and, the, and Omega on that first one is they said they were going to sell it online and then change their mind and didn't. Shame on them. I see that as a bit of a cash grab. And this watch is no slouch in that area because it's also doing a bit of a cash grab. Well, I am rambling on as usual. I'm yapping on about watches. Why? Because I love yapping about watches. Hope you enjoyed this episode, this watch war. And I hope that wherever you are in this wonderful, beautiful hobby of ours, you are blessed and you're doing well. If you ever have any questions about the watches you see in my videos, have no hesitation to reach out to me. I love chatting, yapping watches with people. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And head over to hobbyofhours.com if you want to get some merch, some swag, and uh, you know, have, have some artwork over there, and even a couple watches for sale, too. Happy to give you the front price. All right, we will catch you in the next one. Peace. up a book 1001 watch designs volume one we've got line art oil paintings steampunk and even super duper realistic ones ones that you could probably put on your wrist today it's a good bit of fun and a great way to share your support thanks for coming along on the ride